are about to visit a world where in the name of God, the Almighty, greed and deception has ruined the lives of many. This is the wickedness perpetrated by men and women plying their trade using otherwise good titles like bishops and apostles who prey on the earth's most vulnerable. Tonight, we demonstrate how fast and how short the journey to this treacherous destination can be. I take an ordinary woman with no church background and attempt to turn her into a fake preacher, putting her in Nairobi where hundreds if not thousands of churches and ministries have been established, where she must convince a congregation of staunch believers that she has been sent by God and I will help her perform miracles before their very eyes. This lady did not have credit. Now she's having 20 pull up. Even credit. Now she has 20 in pull up credit in the phone. Jesus. The common belief among millions is that there are specific individuals gifted with divine power to cure any sickness or disease, cast out all types of demons, and see into your past and foretell the future. Declared, let, let phones be topped up. Women appear to be the easy targets of preachings that revolve around faith healing, not just on diseases but more complex situations such as curses, barrenness, demons and bad luck. But there is one constant aggregate to all these teachings, money. A philosophy has been coined and rubbed deep into the psyche of the unsuspecting believers. The preachers call it planting the seed. It is a philosophy that attempts to draw a link between biblical teachings, a believer's money, and the spirit of giving. The preachers give varied interpretations to the scriptures to justify their philosophy. They quote ferociously from the Bible, and 2 Corinthians chapter 9 verse 6 is particularly common. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Then comes the killer punch in verse 7. Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The last part of this verse is regularly emphasized. God loves a cheerful giver. The verse is applied ruthlessly by cunning preachers, they order believers to invest literally in their prayers and the figures in monetary terms are very specific. Panda kupitia numbers za Mpesa unaziona hapo chini. Tuma arafukisha nitakuombea hapo mwisho na utakunywa hiyo maji na utapokea muujiza. Away from the mainstream Christian churches, it is very easy to become a preacher. Indeed, anyone can become one. The requirements are as simple as a Bible in the hand a loud voice and the confidence of a theater actor. As for the audience, there will always be one waiting. I visited Jivanji Gardens here in Nairobi, the bastion of the city's countless street preachers. Like I anticipated, I'm not the only one coming to preach. Every preacher has his or her space and I quickly find mine. My first task was to get an English to Swahili translator. To my surprise, they are readily available here at the Jivanji Gardens. It doesn't matter your situation. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your status. But the Bible says, Come to me, those who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus Christ died on the cross and he died for our cause. If 
you can hear me. I, I, I just know this. Uh, uh, I, that Jesus Christ loves you. Kwamba, yes, he Our audience comprised an attentive minority and a don't care majority. And my translator was in his element. You don't have to die full of sickness and disease. You can get health in Jesus. For the next half hour, I used all the energy and persuasion to connect with my miserably small audience. And just as I have noticed the seasoned street preachers do, I played to their emotions and fears, things like diseases, poverty, and other problems afflicting the needy. With the preaching, I could well have proceeded to collect offerings, an important phase for all street preachers. I choose not to, and instead walked away leaving the space I occupied to the next preacher waiting in line. Anyone can walk into a shop and buy a clerical collar worth 2,000 Kenya shillings like I did and wear it for a public show. There are many who are dressed like this and masquerade as pastors or reverends sent by God to seek the lost. But instead, the target is money, using deception by all means necessary. And for many believers, trust and obey is the rule. Never question the anointed one of God. Never mind a fake one. Believers dutifully flock venues, be it in churches or open grounds, and watch and listen to some of the top millionaires in the country. When is it Attendance is inspired by different needs and the seed depends on the teachings of the preachers depends entirely on how much one wanted back through prayers. She told me that because of my, my, my sins which had not been fully forgiven, I had to put a very hefty seed on the table. And I remember there's a time I had mentioned that my grandmother had given me a piece of land. So she even told me, you know that seed money is on that is taking my, back my son to school. Can you just go and get whatever money you'll get for it and, br and, and, and bring it here? So I sold that land, 100 by 100, for 20K. Then I took all the money and gave it to her. And she prayed for me and she said that my milangos had opened and things were going to be okay. And did things become okay? No. Patricia joined Women of Great Substance Ministries, a homeless church with no permanent address here in Nairobi. What started as a real authentic spiritual journey turned out to be the worst experience for her as we're yet to find out. To penetrate the complex world of what should well be termed as commercial preachers, I had to recruit my own fake preacher. Having checked on qualities such as confidence and charisma, I settled for a candidate that I believed fitted the bill. But I don't go to church and I don't believe in religion. Yvonne is a lawyer by profession and is also pursuing journalism training. Um, I hope this project will surprise me. <laughs> Over the next couple of weeks, Yvonne will go through training on how to preach. Ordinarily, no training is necessary for freelance preachers. The act is entirely dependent on one's own skill, confidence and perhaps reasonable knowledge of the Bible. As Yvonne proceeded for training, I went undercover, posing as a member of the congregation at several religious meetings. I began with a church near one of Nairobi's crowded bus stations where I sat watched and took notes. The church is popular with prophecies. The service here takes a whole four hours and just before it ends, that donation announcement is made. And four times we were told to give, each announcement is a cleverly coined one and for each time we give, we are told to go to the front to receive an anointing. The preacher splashes water on our faces from a bottle he holds in his hands, supposedly to break off the spirit of want and poverty from our lives. And then he broke into what the congregation here considers prophecies. What 
utavuta hewa ya Kenya kule wewe na wewe ni wa America. Narudi jamani ile kwa mtukulia na kwa kuongeza katika jina la Yesu. Enda America kwa. My turn came. I was the subject of a rather interesting prophecy. lakini usiwahi aidiwa kitu tena aina ya tenda wewe ni tajiri wa tenda by the way wewe unalauza hata kile kitu haujui Unaitishwa mawe na huna kwale unaodeliver tu. Unaitishwa yote we nyota yako ni hiyo na ilifungwa 2009. Ndio unaita kitabu sana. 2009 four years ago. Yet I was already forty. Bora zio sana. Sema nyota yake irudi. Ya tenda. Huyu si mtu wa kuomba omba, huyu ni mtu wa kukopeza. Nina kuondolea kisirani kilichokuwa kimekuzunguka maneno mbaya kuombewa mbaya kuonewa wivu katika jina la Yesu narudisha mali yako iliyokuwa imefichwa kuagiza katika jina la Yesu sema amen. Amen. amen sema tena amen, amen. amen. sema tena amen, amen. amen. nao kisirani uende uombe mara I have never involved myself in any procurement process and the prophecy about tenders was a world inaccuracy with regard to me it's just outrageous how many people fall for that trick. From many visits in many of these churches, I discovered those targeted are the vulnerable, poor, or illiterate in our society who are desperate for anything that will give them hope out of some very depressing situations. This type of religious service is very common in churches in downtown Nairobi. Some come complete with advertisement in the media and brochures, others do pamphlets and leaflets, or simple sometimes handwritten signposts. Whatever their mode of communication, these churches and preachers have almost always been assured of an audience. Those who have attended these services say they just keep coming for more prayers. <laughs> Alafu kosi na kucha kama ya mashetani na sasa kukoa paka hata saa zingine na tapika damu. Ndio ni mashetani. Sichuya. Na ani bila na na kaanga saa zingine na wanaanga kama ni ya kutumiwa tu ni pep. Nilisikia tu kama mikuti na tetemeka na mi, na mwili wote na nika faint. Eh wakati ya post alianza deliverance nilisikia tu nimeanza kushukiwa tu na moto nikaanza tu nikajua kuko na kitu leo ndapokea nimeona e, mtu tukipikana naye nikaona nikiwa kwa kisa kisha nikaona mwangaza umekuja but apostle francis musili has an explanation to this the gift that works with me at this particular time is discernment and word of knowledge i can look at your eyes dennis believe you me or not and I can know how many demons are in your life. Even if I've never met you again. Even when I used to go in Matatu, so when I walk in the town, I can tell you that somebody has such a, such a kind of a spirit. One of the Kenyan preachers who was at the height of the miracle revival and led meetings that preached the miracle cure of HIV, AIDS, and cancer was prophetess Lucinduta Mwangi. The class two dropout opened up a church at railway station and preached for at least four years before the authorities took notice of her suspicious activities. <laughs> Patients traveled from different parts of the country to get cured of HIV AIDS from Lucinduta, 
but they also had to plant a seed. This went on for years until an alarm was raised that she was a fraud. Okay, me need to twenty thousand. Like in the matter, I want to to give you a kit Alafu kupereka viti ndiyo akatambia tumweleze shida yetu akatambia hiyo shida tupande begu ya 20000 tukapanda akatupatia pasta mwingine anaitwa pasta motemi akatupereka mobile house kupimwa kupimwa tukaretewa resort kanisani na huyo pasta alafu kukaa kwa muda tukaenda kwa hiyo daktari kumpatia test mone vile Mungu ametutendea huyo daktari ndiye alituambia hana uhakika tumepona akatambia turu, aturudie tukakataa juu pasta alikuwa ameturithrite na mtu asirudiwe Sisi wenyewe tukaamua tukaenda mahali pengine isiri kurudiwa tukakuta bado tuko positive. Police received statements from different people who complained of losing their money to profiters losing duta and never got cured. <laughs> she was arrested and taken to court in a case that drew public interest with a courtroom always full of both victims and supporters. Lucin Duta defended herself against damaging evidence produced by her accusers, some of whom died believing they were cured of HIV AIDS. Nilipeana 20,000, lakini bado tukio huko anatuambia Mungu amesema tununue sijui makati nsi ya kanisa. Yenye ina cost 10,000 aror, unanunua. Tena anasema Mungu amesema anaenda uhuru pak, tunatuitisha pesa ya kujaga jukua. Haendi na tunampatia pesa. Tena anatuambia tukawanya pesa nisi tutaripa hiyo kipidi ya KBC. Tunaripa tena. Kwa hivyo in total hata imepita 100,000. Hakuna mtu wanakuja hapa anaitiswa pesa. Hata nyinyi wenye mkihoji hapa, hakuna mtu wanaitiswa pesa. Hata hiyo elfu miyabiri, elfu miyaini, hakuna kitu kama hiyo. Mana kama ninaitisa pesa, basi ningekuwa milionea. Na ninalara hapa usiku na mchana, diyo watu wapate kupona. Hakuna watu wanaitiswa pesa. Hiyo tu ni kupiga huduma hii. Her supporters stood with her the entire trial, but no one was ever so close to her than this man. Years later, he would turn into a self-proclaimed prophet like his mother. Kanyari, who was exposed by NTV for engaging in prayers for money activities as he assumed church responsibilities while his mother was on trial. He took his church to a different location and started on a clean slate with a new title. The mother would later become his strongest supporter and frequently appears at the end of his TV programs asking for the seed money from viewers. Jina langu ni Pastor Luce, Prophetess Luce, najulikana sana Kenya, nimehubiri miaka mingi na munanijua vizuri sana. Nimelea watoto na nimejifusa kutoa bego. Bego, mimi ni mtumishi wa Mungu lakini natoa sana. Maana ndio maana vita mingi nimekuwa nazo lakini Mungu ameweza kunipigania. After her son was exposed for fleecing his congregation, she raised the planting of seeds figure from 310 to 477. Kuna mtumishi wa, wa Mungu anaitwa Victor Kanyari, amesema tuotese bego na hata ni vizuri sana uotese hiyo bego, amekwambia utabarikiwa. Kwa nini amekwambia uotese saa hii? Unastahili uotese saa hii, piga yeye simu, mpigie simu, aongee na wewe saa hii, atakwambia vile amekwambia kwamba uombe maji na hiyo maji itakusaidia. <tos> Prophetess Lucy Nduta claimed she could offer prayers that would cure anything from HIV AIDS to cancer. Her followers would be directed to visit certain clinics where pre-briefed lab technicians were to change the results of the HIV positive patients. Authorities moved in and investigated the claims by visiting some of the clinics where there was evident resistance. I'm giving instructions that nobody leaves now. These people are moving. Yes, Why is that Why is that scary? Can't you leave you go away? I'm not the owner of Transway. We are not looking for the owner. Why is she, why is she holding me back? I was just outside to make a call. It's okay. You she here. Yeah. Yeah. Did you come out? Yeah. How did you come out? Let me make a call. No, you just can't go anywhere. Years after this episode, the son, Victor Kanyari, is back at it. You are HIV positive. Kimbia. You are HIV positive. Sikizeni. Mungu ameniambia niwaambie. Kwanzia leo. Nobody is HIV positive. Amen. Katika TM. Yes.
Lucin Duta was arrested and charged with 12 counts of fraud by cheating a congregation contrary to Section 315 of the Penal Code of the Laws of Kenya, which states that any person who by means of any fraudulent trick or device obtains from any other person anything capable of being stolen or induces any other person to deliver to any person anything capable of being stolen or to pay or deliver to any person any money or goods or any greater sum of money or greater quantity of goods than he would have paid or delivered, but for such trick or device is guilty of misdemeanor and is liable to imprisonment for three years. Prophetess Lucinduta obtained a total of 1,591,200 shillings from 12 members of her church, but the highest amount she made from a single person during that period was from witness number two, a secretary in Machakos who paid 700,000 Ken shillings and a blue plastic chair after watching a program on TV. She was HIV positive and hoped to get cured, but this never happened. And then she came to me, I tested her, she was positive. And then uh, she told me after counseling and after having a, a little talk with her, she told me that uh, uh, she, in her church, uh, her pastor who is a prophetess, uh, prays for people, after praying for people, and then heals people. After healing people, then people turn negative. So he, she, after turning positive, she was encouraged and uh, she told me that she was going to, to her pastor. Then she was prayed for. After some time, she came back again to me. And uh, after coming back again to me, I tested her. Uh, she knew that she had been prayed for and she was negative. So when she came back to me, I tested her. The result did not turn to be negative. It was, the, it was still positive. Lucy induced another woman to deliver her Toyota Helix registration number KUJ956 to receive prayers for her sick daughter in 2004. The daughter was never cured. Those who didn't receive the miracle healing were told God refused to heal them because they had not made a huge donation, according to this witness statement, during the trial. A middle-aged man who attended this church in 2005 from Busia died of HIV AIDS after refusing to take medication believing he was healed from prayers offered here. I got in touch with a brother who refused to appear on camera but took me to his gravesite in this public cemetery in Nakuru. The family rejected him even in his death saying he belonged to a denomination they never prescribed to and died of HIV AIDS Therefore, they never wanted a curse in their family. Prophetess Lucin Duta of Salvation Miracle Church was on trial for two years for defrauding members of our congregation. And in her ruling, Lady Justice Rosalind Mutoka said, Evidence produced was credible and the accused person was certainly not a prophet because she used the utter hopelessness of her victims and stuck them to the maximum using God's name. Her action against innocent and terminalistic members of the society can only be termed as despicable and does not deserve mercy. The judge said the accused must be used as an example to others who are using religion to take advantage of the desperate and the despaired in our society. Religion is only meant to offer hope and not to exploit. In my view, a custodial sentence is therefore inevitable. Prophetess Lucin Duta was sentenced to serve two years in prison on the 28th of January 2008. Many of the techniques used by fake preachers to fleece thousands off their hard-earned money started in the 1980s in the United States of America when many Christian preachers devoted a large portion of their ministry to television broadcasting, which Time magazine coined televangelism. One of the first deceptive techniques was where faith healers didn't just heal the sick or cast out devils, but many claimed they engaged in direct communication with God and that God channeled information about certain individuals in their congregation. In that era of the 80s, mass rallies like this one of a self-proclaimed prophet and faith healer Peter Popov drew thousands of Christians and a TV audience amassing tens of untaxed millions of dollars from his ministry. 
There it is in Jesus' name. Peter Popov said he had a gift of knowledge from God that enabled him to identify the sick and pick them out from the crowds and also supplied them with names and their home addresses. He then laid hands on them and prayed for their healing. For years, he was on top of his game until a secret team of investigators led by this man, James Randi, a skeptic, found something interesting. Here it comes. Okay, she moves at 4267 Masterson. 4267 Masterson, I can see the angels of God all around your house. And she's praying for her daughter Joy, who's allergic to... I'll tell you, God is going to give Joy complete deliverance. That affectionate telephone quality female voice is Peter Popoff's wife, Elizabeth, speaking to him during a service in California. The investigators noticed that Peter Popoff accurately called people by their names, ailments and relatives, and even threw in an occasional street address for good measure. They discovered he was wearing a hearing aid in his left ear, something that was ironical for a preacher who supposedly performed healing miracles. Just lift up your hands. God is going to recreate those veins. The investigators from a San Francisco police department used an electronic surveillance FM scanning system and discovered a radio transmission link with which his wife backstage was communicating to him through a tiny receiver hidden in his inner ear. Popov's wife Elizabeth was giving him personal details of members of the congregation from conversations held before the service and from prayer request cards filled before the service. Talking to you. Can you hear me? If you can't, you're in trouble. After the deception was revealed on national television, Peter Popov admitted to his fraud. Are cigarette advertisers exploiting their audience? Are the beer brewers exploiting their audience? You know, you could say, well, they are, yes. He was declared bankrupt 16 months later, but in 2011, 25 years later, after the expose, the disgraced televangelist bounced back to business, not just preaching, but he now has a brand new gospel of miracle water and manna from heaven. Basically, a biscuit, and when you plant a seed, then you receive spiritual debt cancellation and prosperity. I need 50 people to help me with a $1,000 gift. I need 100 people to help me with 500. Notice the figures on the screen. 50 people giving a seed of $1,000 is $50,000, just the same figure as 100 people giving $500. This preacher where he seated has collected lots of money. Imagine collecting 327 shillings from one individual, 100 individuals a day, 365 days a year. How much money is that? Well, that deception has seen the rise of some churches selling anointing water, anointing oil, and handkerchiefs as holy merchandise to unsuspecting Christians. This anointing water which I bought at Helicopter Church of Christ goes for 200 shillings. There is a separate anointing water for business which I was instructed to spray the walls of my house while praying seven times every day and while cooking food with a guarantee that no devil in hell will come near me. Patricia, a mother of four, found herself in one of the worst situations for any Christian that nearly destroyed her family after she became a member of one such church. My husband had taken a loan which was supposed to finance a business we were doing. And what we did is, and at the same time we're still being told to move from where we live and we're supposed to go and live in Jamhuri Estate because apparently it means independence. So God is ushering us into freedom. So here you are, you're supposed to be moving, and at the same time you're supposed to be paying for a holiday. So for me what I thought, moving was paramount because we had been given a deadline. And we had been told if you, if you don't move by the end of April, one, two, three, four things will happen. So uh, we took the money for the business and we moved, which was quite expensive. So we moved, then the next day I'm summoned, and I'm told, who told you to move? Was moving a priority? or was my holiday a priority? Why is it that you people do not, are, are not able to discern what God is saying? Taking a pastor for holiday was just among many events that nearly got her killed. The pressure became so much until one day I just went to my bedroom and I told God, God, if I got saved, for you to mistreat me the way you're mistreating me, you know very well we don't have any money, 
my family and I are struggling. That time my kids have been home for a month because of school fees. Then God, I do not understand how unfair you can be. And at that point, I just knew I cannot be alive anymore. If at all, God was giving me instructions and I was not able to fulfill these instructions. So I went to the shop. I bought some uh, medicine called Sindol, about 20 tablets. I bought um, a half Smanov vodka. Went, locked myself up in my bedroom and I took them. You took 20 tablets? Yes. Sindol is very powerful. It's taken for migraine. <sighs> then the next thing I knew I was in um, I was in Nairobi hospital and I could not believe I was not gone. I could not believe that God could not allow me to go. And it was such a tough time because that woman called my husband and told my husband that I was trying to seek attention, that he needed to walk out on me. In fact, those days that I was in hospital, he never came to see me. And the women, all the women in the ministry were told not to come and see me, that God had said nobody should come see me. What you're about to watch is not an attack on sincerely held beliefs of the decent church goer. It is an attempt to expose the systematic and manipulative exploitation of the vulnerable people who desperately are seeking spiritual answers to their problems, but greedy individuals are ruining their lives all in the name of God. When it comes to opulence, few of them compared to business moguls and their influence rivals that of politicians, even their security detail. Zaina Award, an Al Jazeera correspondent, attended a service in Apostle James Mainanganga Church where she became an unwilling participant. Come. Come here. You. You are from Britain? I'm from Canada. Canada. Canada is a Africa? No. Is a, a Following a story of Kenya's televangelism to understand their lifestyle compared to the state of their congregation. What does he bring to your life? This one. Yes, this one. He cleanses every obstacle in my life. And so I believe now I'm free from every bondage. And what do you give him in return? I, immediately God blesses me. It's me to decide what I'll go. I'm going to bless him with. Today is the day that Yvonne Chege, my fake preacher, will attempt to preach for the first time and convince a small congregation of believers that she has been sent from above. Hours of training, memorizing scripture and watching other preachers on YouTube have in a deceptive way prepared her for tonight's assignment. Okay. It's 8 p.m. And it's time for the big night. This will be the culmination of this project as a small crowd turning up for this revival meeting is oblivious about what is about to happen. I will attempt to use the same tactics that most fake preachers have used over the time to carry and prove that anyone can create a spiritual atmosphere based on deceit. Here it comes. I'll tell you, you're going to work. You're going to jump. You're going to exercise and feel... Here it goes. And Je Jesus, ne right now. Woo! As the prayer cards are being filled up, someone will collect them and hand them over to me. As soon as we get the cards and go through a few, the oh, preacher of the day ready is ready to preach. He has a plan for each and every one of us. He will end our tribulations. He can touch you. For the next couple of hours, she effortlessly quotes scripture with a crowd feeding from our story of falling from grace and subsequent redemption. Lord, I know the plans I have for you. Plans to prosper you. With a crowd charged after our preaching, it was time for me to step up and get into the prayer session. I want you to make a prayer. Stretch your hands, just make a prayer. Just as we've seen with other fake preachers, I have information of some of the members from the prayer request cards and like a prophet, I call them out and pretend I'm receiving the information through a divine channel. This is something to God, mention something to God. 
I'm seeing her calling, calling you, and it was, I think, two, two times or something, and then you didn't want to go because you felt you're too tired. She's been sick for, for long, and you're feeling like you're tired. <coughs> Deep inside, this was a troubling experience for me. The tricks, some of them very simple, are working, and I could well be the next big thing in the unaccountable world of freelance, commercial preacher. But I did the most unlikely thing for such a preacher, sparing the wallets of my unsuspecting congregation. For I was and remain just an investigative reporter on assignment. So many people what have suffered. Wami, 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 wami. They're asking themselves questions. When will this suffering end? 